I don't like this race. We do nothing but climb this shitty hill. Harsh words from the son who had to watch his father eating pigeon pies for a snack after being taken to school back in 2016 when he failed again and again at the Coppenbeer Cross against the Belgian bots who took advantage of his better technique back then to beat him on the popular cobblestone wall. Eight years later, the world champion not already knows how perfectly well to climb that goat slope. He's also the best cyclist in the peloton, climbing it in the most difficult weather conditions. And it is the place where he has become the best cyclist in the history of the Tour of Flanders, equaling in triumphs historical dopers like Johan Museo or Tom Bonen or divas who some accuse of concealing a motor on their bike like Fabian Cancellara. And not only that, he has also beaten again the record of the fastest edition of the race, which itself was made by Poggy in the 2023 season, and that at the time had beaten the record of legendary dopers, such as corticosteroid Bortolami in 2001, or the Danish, always Danish, Rolf Sorensen in 1997. He's done it in one of the hardest editions in history, a race where both von der Poel himself and his main rivals reached the finish line totally spent. It was a race that has been boring and predictable, but at the same time it amused us with performances typical of the best neighbourhood fairs sponsored by the infamous criminal Whacking the Moneylender. Now, if you want us to be the ones to cover in first person the show of these monsters on bicycles in 2025, you could collaborate with a donation by joining as a member of the channel or leaving a super thanks. But now, yes, without further ado, let the show begin. The second monument of the season actually started four days earlier with the Doise du Flanderer, a less prestigious competition than the E3 Harald Becker or Gent Wevelchem, but important to check if Mats Pedersen and the Lidl Trek team were still at the same level in the classics this season, or if Wout van Aert had showed his vaunted power on the cobblestones after coming down the Tede and the Tenerife breakwaters loaded with power in his bulging legs. Unfortunately, after a crash where the Belgian bot and most of the leading group were involved, we couldn't see it. Pedersen had to retire in pain. And Wout the Chaser finished really, really badly with a broken collarbone. A fact that, for the YouTuber who dines every day at McDonald's, will disrupt the whole season. But Jonas Vingegaard should still be number one favourite to win the Tour. What he has disrupted, of course, is the Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix. With his two biggest rivals sidelined or extremely sore, top favourite Von der Poel suddenly became the only candidate to win Durand. Yes, again, we were in for a dull contest. We had to see how the same man was going to win three of the last five monuments that he competed in. We knew that as soon as the grandson of the guy who criticised doping controls took the lead on just one of the walls, the race would be doomed, barring a crash or a serious mechanical failure. And so it was, but unlike other exhibitions we've seen in recent times, the Rainbow Jersey show has been surprisingly fun. As if, in a concert of his idol Justin Bieber, there was a surprise guest appearance from a bald Ariana Grande, ready to excite an already excited teenage audience just a little bit more. Of course, I would like to give the necessary kudos to Mats Pedersen, a guy who has thrown off the status of the worst world champion of the decade, based purely on cojones and impressive performances like Kent Wevelchem, where beating the Dutch robot after drilling the legs of the Nichismo, as the former governor of California does in the popular commercials of the supermarket brand he sponsors, injured after the crash days earlier and despite already having 21 days of competition in his legs he was encouraged to participate in Flanders and did so by showing his face in one of the greatest immolations ever seen in a monument if Poggy attacked 81 kilometers from the finish line why shouldn't he if the bunch relaxed perhaps he'd have a slight chance to triumph just as the legendary doper with more luck than anyone in the world did in 1992 but unfortunately for him, the lover of coffees loaded in Valencian cafes sent his Gregario Gianni Vermeersch as a blotter to stop any Danish illusions. Pedersen tried until he was caught by the group of favourites, 
So even if he finished 22nd, almost three minutes behind the winner, he deserves a round of applause in the comments on your part. Because this is what we want. We want humans that dare to fight the aliens. This is the only way to put an end to the absurd domination from five or six riders in all the important races of the calendar. After several skirmishes between the favourites, the key moment arrived. The ascent of the Koppenberg, where von der Poel hated it so much when he was still under 23 and a strong cyclocross rider. The strong wind and the very high speeds had already worn the riders out. But the rain falling on this cobbled hill with gradients of more than 20%, well, that was going to determine who is the best rider in the world on these walls, where raw power and technical precision are required. The Dutchman is no longer the little boy who debuted in 2019, trying to win just by asserting his strength, and although it has taken years, he has become a smarter man. He asked his teammates to protect him up the popular hill, and once there, he would determine the race. Ahead, the Spaniard Garcia Cachopo tried to pedal hard, as if his pedals were whirling round like windmills, like the little, little arms of Vout Pools a week earlier. But then he had to get off his bike, as the vast majority of the peloton did, as historically this has always happened on this climb. The same one that the bully Bernard Hinault did not want to climb, because he didn't want to make a fool of himself and the same one where the race director's car viciously ran over the Dane, always the Dane, Jesper Skibby, in the 1987 edition. The son of the guy who used to get testosterone in his veins from the mythical PDM squad was able to climb at full power and leave behind another favourite, the Gregario of Gregarios, Matteo Jorgensen, who took advantage of the fall of his leader bot to win Dwarz Door Flanderer in an epic season for him. The gringo of the Visma team made a serious mistake, possibly because of the confidence given to him by his new nutritionists who bring him all the necessary vitamins straight to his home, just like an Uber Eats order. He wanted to try to follow the unleashed beast, the nemesis from Resident Evil 3, who was smashing the pedals of his canyon bike in the rain, while the Rodhoff brothers played Justin Bieber, singing All I Want for Christmas is You over the earpiece radio. Ah, the popular hit of the Canadian one-boy band covering the alcoholic Mariah. Jorgensen was fried, even before climbing the Aude Quarmont for the last time. That was the moment where the bib number one was insulted by Belgian mediocrities who can't stand that this Belgian by birth rider chose instead a different nationality to compete in cycling. He chose the favourite nationality of the stoner Floyd. And then, as if he was Santa Claus motivated by the aforementioned song, Von der Poel gave them a gift in all their Flemish faces. A legendary triumph, and he knew how to regulate in the last kilometres so that he didn't get fried in the middle of the road, as happened to him in those world championships where Mats Pedersen took advantage of the lack of strength of the Dutch beast. After lifting his bike at the finish line in the classic gesture that brought back into fashion the forgotten Diego Rosa, Matteo VDP entered the Olympus of the cycling gods. But the show didn't end there. Behind, the big peloton of cyclists was picking up one by one all the corpses that von der Poel was crushing while they were chasing him. The much-improved Oya Lascano, the injured Pedersen, the Gregario of Gregarios, Garcia Cachopo, and even the two who could have accompanied him, the cramped gangster Betiol and the representative of the Israel Premier Tech Jewish cycling team Dylan Turns, they ended up being swallowed by the pack. Never mind that an Italian with no World Tour wins finished second. It was much more relevant to see three UAE riders, Niels Politz, Mikel Bierg, and the very young Portuguese wattage record breaker Antonio Machado. They finished third, fourth, and fifth, while behind them, Tim Wellens, Poggy's best friend in the peloton, had been sweating like a pig trying to catch Von der Poel. In Dracula Gianetti stable, there's no order. There isn't a hierarchy, it seems. It's like we're watching a group of millionaire men where everyone is looking out for his own interest and not for that as the team as a whole. All these riders finished just one minute behind Von der Poel and they were rapidly closing the gap in the final kilometres. 
Who knows, if they had been more organised, we might have been talking about historic ridicule of a guy who attacked without looking back at 45 kilometres from the finish line. If they had been brave, like Pedersen, maybe a miracle could have been worked. But they weren't, and it didn't happen. But in the meantime, Von der Poel can enjoy this video of himself, eating industrial pastries next to Kolobnev's hyperbaric chamber hotels, before he goes on to the Roubaix Velodrome.